was a deep dive we did at ILM around the time we did Rogue One. Um, and Dennis Mirren and Pat Tubach uh, launched this little project, and I think it was really cool. And this is just a couple examples of it. They took a shot like this from Empire, this beautiful miniature in Empire, and added a CG Star Destroyer to the shot and started fussing around with things to see what we wanted to keep from the old look and what we wanted to discard. But, you know, one thing it told us is if we really want to, we can make it look just like, uh, just like it did. Um, but we learned a lot of stuff. This is another one. That's the original shot on Hoth, and then that's our CG uh, thing uh, at, at animated to look like stop motion um, in the foreground. And again, the, the, the idea here was just to learn about what to keep and what to discard. And, and this kind of information helps us with, with these decisions about, about what to use. So, you know, I've always wanted to use this GIF in a talk because I just love it. Um, so we, you know, we're always here, uh, um, honestly. Uh, and, and, and as I said, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be on a project where we can, we can consider both options. I know that's not always the case because of budget or, or whatnot. Um, but the great thing uh, that John really loves to do, and this goes back to when I worked with him first on um, Iron Man, is to kind of mix it up to keep the audience confused about what they're seeing. And I think this is where using both techniques together really starts to make sense and shine. Like this is a shot from Iron Man, and this is digital, this is all digital coming up, his, up the leg because we had all these actuators and things that needed to move. Um, you get up here, the chest piece, the shoulders, the helmet, that's all real. And you kind of settle on it and you can really look at it. And I don't think it's obvious, I mean maybe it is now that I pointed it out, but, um, but I don't think it's obvious, but there are you know, there are weird little micro clues in that armor that tell you that it's really tactile and real. Um, and you, we could get there if we had had to have done this all digitally. We could have gotten there and I think made it look good. But mixing it up, I just think, is, is wonderful. And hopefully on a subconscious level, the audience keeps guessing about, um, you know, what's being used. So this is our practical um, legacy effects Banta on uh, season two of Mandalorian and seen again in Book of Boba Fett. It's wonderful, it's, it's just amazing. Now I can't travel, I can't, I can't travel, but we can get shots that feel like it's walking. Um, and we do that, but, so those are all digital, 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 digital Tuscans, digital Banthas. That's the real one in the, for, in the foreground. And the camera's actually just moving towards it to make it feel like it's walking. And the second one back is also the real one, the same Bantha, we only have one practical Bantha. And then the ones beyond it are, are CG. And here they're all CG. And so we just, you know, we continue to mix it up depending on the shot design and what we need in a, in a given shot. That's the real one there out of focus behind him because we, we pull to it and they're interacting with it. And then that's, I think, one real one and the rest are all digital and, you know, you get the idea. But um, uh, to me, that's the best of both worlds.